What's going on everyone? It's Marcellus back with another video. We gotta go over something really important here with Baby Doge. And it's something a lot of people probably aren't paying attention to, but it's definitely something that we need to talk about. So before we even start, hit the like button and subscribe. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. Leave a comment in the comment section and let's get straight to it. So let's talk about this. We already talked about the technical analysis in the last video. This video, I'm probably just gonna go over it very briefly at the end. But first, let's move on from all that. So let's talk about this. So this is really, really big. And they just now posted this on the official Baby Doge Twitter. So it says Baby Doge is trending on Crypto.com, which, as we all know, is one of the top crypto apps out there. One of the top uh, decentralized exchanges out there. But yeah, this is huge because we're on their most popular uh, coins and tokens. And now we're on there. And it says right here, one of the most popular exchanges in the world with over 70 million users recognizing baby doge that means seven 70 million people on crypto.com are able to see baby doge so that's pretty big and i think like i've been saying you know in my all, all of my videos i've been talking about this snowball effect that happened to shiba inu and and uh dogecoin when they were going off and now we're kind of seeing it happen to floki inu we're seeing floki inu being added to a lot of exchanges it's now on kucoin now a lot of other exchanges are going to find floki inu and start adding it because of KuCoin added it. So all the other exchanges are going to want a piece of that. So they're all going to keep applying to now list uh, Floki on their exchange. So this is going to be pretty big. And uh, as you can see here, LCX, there, there's a lot of different exchanges listing Floki. I mean, KuCoin, uh, there's just so many of them just lifting, listing Floki back to back. And I feel like this might be the same thing that happens with Baby Doge here. We might get a bunch of them listing us back to back, especially if we got started off just getting listed to crypto.com or Binance, if it was one of two, those two, it would definitely take off. But KuCoin is usually first to the party. So if we see KuCoin listing us first, and then all these other exchanges will probably follow after that. But KuCoin is usually the start to the party. So I think uh, Floki Inu is about to have a really, really nice time over there. All those people on Floki are going to have a nice time. I really think that they're both going to take off. And as you can see here, now we even have the Binance Smart Chain gem alerts over here asking their 214,000 followers whether they're Team Floki or Team Baby Doge. Mind you, this one post has 100,000 views. You can see it right here, 100,000 views on this one post. So yeah, that's a lot of people seeing this. And I'll be honest, um, I'm, just, I'm still going to say Team Baby Doge because Baby Doge has a stronger community, has more people in the community. And we're just stronger overall. I believe in Baby Doge more. Even though Team Floki did get on the KuCoin without, you know, being around as long as us. I think they've been around maybe longer than us. But still, you know, Floki Inu was able to get on there. We had way more um, volume and everything than Floki Inu. But right now you can see Baby Doge ranked 96 on CoinGecko. And if you go over to Floki, you're going to see it's ranked 106. So we're still kind of better than Floki. But you can still see, you know, they're down like 11.5% right now in the last 24 hours. But yeah, you can see like we we are doing better than Floki on in general. But, you know, they're still above us and they still now got listed on to KuCoin before us. So, you know, it's just how it is because, you know, we have that 10% tax. I would say that's the one thing that's kind of preventing us. But they can still list us if they want to list us. They can still list us because just like how Binance added that little tax on for Luna Classic, they can do the same thing for baby doge so that's definitely not a problem they can do that but we just gotta wait to see if they'll actually do it it's just i guess some of them are having problems i guess with stuff like that with the sec saying hey this is a security all this other stuff but yeah i do think that we're gonna get a snowball effect and sooner or later we're, we'll start to get these major listings from kucoin to crypto.com to binance to coinbase you know all these top exchanges kraken voyager I think eventually we'll start seeing those tier one exchanges starting to list us. But for now, we're still doing pretty good. You know, we just now got listed to uh, Polynix. So that's also pretty cool right here. And um, actually, let me go over to that that post that they're talking about Polynix because that, that exchange has literally been out since 2014 and we're on there. So, I mean, that this stands for something. Like we, we can't act like this is like nothing. When this, stand, this definitely stands for something. And then on top of all this, on top of the stuff with uh, Crypto.com and us trending on top of Crypto.com, and we're not even listed on there, we're doing the same thing on Binance. We're trending on the top of Binance. We're not even listed. 
and neither is Floki Inu listed. So I also think that Floki will also do well as well. And I think Floki is probably going to get listed maybe on the Binance before us. I don't know. It's, it's what it's looking like. They're on top right now. We're like right under them on that. But I don't know. It still looks like Floki would probably get listed on the Binance before us just because I don't know. It's like they, they really don't like the tokenomics taxes, but eventually they're going to have to list Baby Doge. Like, look at us. We're, we're literally ranked number two. And like I said, with Luna Classic, they can do it. They have the they have the possibilities to do it. They have the knowledge to do it. They know how to do it. They've done it for Luna Classic. There's other things that have tokenomics taxes there. They can do it. It's just going to be up to them on when they do that. But yeah, I think uh, we're definitely going to get some of the snowball effect, and hopefully, hopefully, a binding list Baby Doge and Floki as well. That'll be cool to see both of them get listed. But uh, moving on from that, we have here are the top BNB chain projects by social engagement in the last 24 hours. And this is what I'm talking about. Baby Doge is on top for everything. We're literally on top for this as well. So that's no surprise. We're always going to be on top for this type of stuff. I mean, we have literally one of the largest, one of the one of the largest crypto communities out there. So we're doing better than a lot of other projects. But you know, Floki Inu still trending over here on the sidelines. But not I keep saying Inu, but obviously it's not Inu, it's Floki. But yeah, for over here, I would say Baby Doge is definitely gonna be one that gets listed. But yeah, shout out to all the people out there inside of uh, Baby Doge, Floki, Doge Line. It seems like the meme coins are winning right now. Like it's meme coin season right now. That's what it's feeling like. And I'm probably going to make a whole video on this because this definitely feels like meme coin seasoning. A lot of people are, they're just, they're YOLO in it. Like they're literally just going in all their money, boom, throwing it into Floki or Floki and then throwing it into baby dolls and stuff like this. Like this is what a meme coin season looks like. So I, I don't think this is the end of it yet for baby doge. So that's also why I, why I wanted to go over a few other things. So we're going to go over the technical analysis now here with baby doge. So let's talk about the technical analysis. And actually, before that, look over here. We now have 1,699,229 holders, almost 1.7 million holders inside of Baby Doge. So, yeah, that's a lot of holders. Anyways, moving on, let's talk about this technical analysis because as you can see here, we're still stuck on the same support lines here for Baby Doge. So we're still stuck on those same supports, and we're waiting to see what happens there. But right now, we're at 8C31. So let's see if we can you know, hold this up and see how long we're going to end up staying on this spot. But let's go ahead and put this on the four-hour chart now. So, like, if we get this on the four-hour chart, you can see we're even pulling back down here. The bottom of this support would be at 8Z27. Now, what I really want to look at is uh, scrolling all the way out here and then looking at where where is it possible for us to land for our support, right? Where is our lowest possible support line? And to me, when I look at this, I believe our lowest possible support line, 8Z10. And if it even goes below 8Z10, you know it's only going to go to like 9Z9, 9Z8. And that's usually what happens before we get another pump. So what I really see foresee right now with Baby Doge, like I do see us going back down to 8Z22. Like I'm definitely seeing that like with how hard we're literally on this uh, support line. I don't see us like, you know, being able to stay above it for too long. Like. This this is typically what happens before we get another pullback. So I think this next pullback is going to bring us down to AZ22. A lot of people don't like to hear that. But like I said, Baby Doge could be about to pump soon. So like I feel like if we do pull back the 2-2 and possibly down to 8Z1, we probably will build that momentum up to pump again. And it's exactly how it happened last time. We had the momentum because we started all the way down there at the bottom and people just cost, kept dollar cost averaging in. And it eventually got us up. But right now what we're seeing, people are taking some profits out. And now we're starting to see some sales. I've seen a few people inside of the uh, groups that we have out there. And they mentioned that there was a huge sale of Baby Doge of like $2 million or something. It was trillions and trillions of Baby Doge, like $60 trillion. So there was that one large sale that happened. And then there's a bunch of other sales that are happening left and right here. So I think we could be seeing this. But with all these exchange listings now coming for Baby Doge, that is probably what's going to end up bringing us up. So even though, even though, like when we look at the prices here, we're probably set to pull back. Like we still got to think about it. We still got exchange listings that just come out the blue. So out of nowhere, KuCoin wanted to list a Floki. 
that same thing could happen to us. And we see that we're training on crypto.com's website. They haven't listed us, but we're we're still training there. We're training on Binance. They haven't listed us, but there's but we're still training there. So it's really looking like this is the um the motive right now. It does definitely looks like we're gonna have some type of pump coming in baby doge once we bottom out again. So I'm still looking for that bottom. I definitely believe that we can bottom out again here in baby doge. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear it, but <clears throat> there's a reason why I keep mentioning that, just because that's that's just what I see when I'm looking at these charts. And um, you know, like I said, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice, so nothing I say is 100% right or wrong. They're just uh, opinions. But yeah, like I said, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just kind of following this. And what I foresee right now is another drop. We've been at this support for way too long. Let me take off these indicators. We've been at this support for way too long. I know people are probably looking at it like, ah, yeah, we've been at this support for a day. But we, with no to no avail, you can see that we tried to break out once. But then we couldn't. Now we're back riding the same support line. If we stay on the support line for any longer, we're going to drop below it. If we drop below the support line, the next support line is 8Z22. And that's the next major support line at 8Z22. So typically with our minor support lines, we drop down. You know, We may go up for a little bit and then we'll go back down from there almost immediately. And that's just for the minor ones. Like we have a minor support line down here at like 8Z29. We have another one down here about 8Z28. Those are minor supports, but the major ones past 8Z25 all the way down here at 8Z22, that's typically where we end up stopping and bouncing off. So if you can even see it over here. Like we stopped, we we stopped over here around 8Z39, and then we went back up, and then we dropped to our support. So I feel believe the thing, same thing could happen again. You know, we go down here, we go back up a little bit, and then we go down to that 8Z22 support. A lot of people don't want to hear it, but let's talk about the possibilities of a z22 so like let's let's really be real here like let's take this calculator and do some real calculations because a lot of people don't understand how good of an area a z22 is so first of all we have about 153 quadrillion circulating supply but i'm gonna just copy and paste this 159 quadrillion just because it doesn't matter too much if it works just a little bit off but so I just want you to like look at this. Like, let's say we go back down to AZ22, right? This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, two, two. That would bring us back down to a $350 million market cap. Right now, we're at $507 million market cap. See, the importance of this, let's just say you go ahead and you want to say, let's say I take $1,000 and I put it in at AZ22 compared to now. Like, if I put a thousand dollars in an AZ22, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I gotta say it or else someone's just gonna forget it. But uh, yeah, if I put a thousand dollars in an AZ22, I have a 454 billion baby doge, right? 454 billion. Now, if I put a thousand dollars in at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at eight Z, um, let's say, because we already did two, two, let's say right now, at least three, three, one, eight, one. Let's just say I bought in now. If I bought baby dose now, I would only get 314 billion compared to 445 billion if I wait till 8Z22. So if I wait for the next support line, I'm getting a hundred billion more baby doge. And just to kind of show you the difference of what a hundred billion will be inside of uh, a while, let's just look at this inside of uh, maybe a year or two. That's my that's my prediction, at least for 6C1. But yeah, look, this is 6C1. And yeah, 100 billion should be about $10,000. So that's a pretty big difference. And that's why I'm waiting for it to drop down a little bit more. I want to put more than $1,000 in. So that's why I'm looking at 8Z to put in some at 8Z22, which is our next support, right? And then I'm also looking to put some more in. If we continue to go down to put some more in all the way down here at 8Z12. So 8Z22 and 8Z12. If we go all the way down there, if we go that low, this is a, all the all hypotheticals, people. If we go down that low, that's my plan right there, because with one thousand dollars at eight Z one two three four five six seven eight eight Z one, pretty much, we would have one trillion baby Doge at eight Z one, and one trillion baby Doge at six Z one gets you one hundred thousand dollars. So that is the plan right there. And yeah, that's that's pretty much my plan. And I really, I really want to put ten trillion, have ten trillion baby doge, but we would have to drop down to you know eight Z one in order for me to get 
a whole you know 10 trillion like that but yeah that's pretty much my plan and, and that's how i'm gonna do this and i still believe it's gonna end up pulling back it's just bound to happen i mean i've been following these baby dose charts for a while and typically stuff like this happens but what i will say is i think we may be back quicker than expected you know just like how we you know already are all the way down at 8z31 yeah there's a possibility going into tomorrow or another day like that we come down to eight, uh 8z22 right down here right and then just completely continue to pump there's a possibility it doesn't go all the way down to 8z10 or 12 or 10 because pretty much what i'm saying i'm saying it's definitely gonna pull back but how far is it going to pull back that's the real question we're, that we got to ask we know it's going to pull back but how far do we pull back down here to our support at 8z22 and then continue to pump or do we pull all the way down to 8z12 all the way down here and then continue to pump so those are the questions that we pretty much got to ask ourselves but this is pretty much all i got for you all today yeah definitely hit the like button and subscribe and subscribe remember i'm not a financial advisor None of this is financial advice. Leave a comment in the comment section. And as always, I'll be back with another video.